Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank y'all so much for stopping by again the live stream. Shout out to the NTZ crew. That's Jacob Tanjay. I hope Michael Beach of Life can make it today. Thank you, brother, for everything you've done over the years. You've been with us, man. I owe you. Shout out to my members. Thank y'all for y'all support. We'll have our members live stream in the morning Filipino time. All my old heads, thank y'all for staying around. Johnny S, what times and travels. There's Angelo Habib. Yeah, this is y'all's channel, man. Really appreciate it. Any new viewers and subscribers join us for the first time today, thank y'all for joining us. And also anybody on the replay. You know, we always have a topic. Today's topic is why men don't learn from the mistakes of other men when traveling overseas. You know, I'm baffled by this. We're literally standing on the shoulders of the men who came before us, who blazed the trail. Surely we can learn something from them, learn something from each other. But we're going to talk about that because when you make the same mistakes over and over, expecting different results, they call that insanity. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. What's up, Jabras? What's up, Kamal? I thought I saw Sam McCall. Yeah, there he is. The peso is 56.39. I'm coming to y'all today from Dumaguete. I call it Dumaguete City on that blog that I'm uploading. You know, the internet is just so slow here in the, in the hotel, but at least it's, it's steady. I'm here at the world famous Tip Top Inn. You know, one of the places I stay in Dumaguete, it's 1,250 pesos a night. They usually have vacancies right across the street from Robinson, Right on the main road, you can go to uh, Dalwin, uh, Bacon, Zambongida, Shatton, or you can go the other way and go to uh, the Boulevard. It's a, it's a great location. You get a free breakfast. By the way, the weather's really, really good today. It looks like it may have gotten a little rain today here. It's not like San Carlos City. I mean, it's super hot right now. El Nino is really on the job. What's up, Twiggy? You know, before we get started, because you know, remember, this is your channel. Trust me, guys, whatever you want to talk about, just put it over here. If I can get to it, uh, I will. But I like to talk about some of the uh, current events and some of the vlogs I did leading up to the live stream. You know, O.J. Simpson died. Rest in peace to the juice. You know, he was found innocent by a jury of his peers, and but he was convicted in the media. He took it to the grave. He literally took that to the grave with him. Whatever happened, you know, he succumbed to cancer. But man, I was just watching him on, what's that show with Mason uh, Cameron? Because he was part of that little YouTube podcast. And hell, yeah, he had, uh, I think he was suffering from prostate cancer. But yeah, rest in peace, OJ Simpson. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is in uh, America meeting with Biden and uh, the leader of Japan. Some trilateral meeting they're having. Probably about them bases to get open up over here. You know. Uh, the vlog that I, I'm uploading today is called We Made It. You know, I was catching the bus to Dumaguete yesterday 
and I didn't look up. I just was I, I, I changed seats because um, I mean these are little bitty seats on these buses. I want to get more room, so we stop at the terminal. And there's a guy sitting next to me. I didn't even look at his face. I just thought he was Filipino because, you know, he, he had that beige complexion. And I said, hey, can you tell her to give me two coats? Well, I gave him one. But when I gave it to him, I looked at him. The guy was from Canada, man. And he lives in San Carlos City. I know, I know exactly where he lived. And we were just talking about the things we liked about the Philippines. And just out of the blue sky, he said, you know, we made it. We made it out of that matrix, man. It, it's just been ringing in my mind. Like, man, you, you're right. We did make make it, and uh, I, I made my vlog about that. Hey, brutal for lies. Thank you, brother, for your super chat, man. I don't have all that fancy stuff and all them bells and whistles you got, man, but. I do have a sincere thank you, brother. And I saw where you gave me a shout out on your channel, man. It's a big deal, man. You know, the bloggers stick together. I always look at it as a as a community. You know, we're under attack, man. You know, I, I shouted you out on my new blog I'm uploading now. And also tell him any dreams because he's um he said he's he's uh hanging it up. He says too much drama, people trying to pull themselves up on your back. And he said, you know, among other things, that's the main reason, man. And it's a big deal. He says, salute, Cal. I'm a big fan of your content, El Guapo. Thank you so much, man. It means a lot. Because, you know, I, I don't understand why we're, we come under such attack. We're trying to do the best we can. I'm bringing people to the Philippines. They don't have to make that 20 hour flight El Guapo. They don't have to spend that uh, money for that plane ticket. I'm bringing them right here. Okay, without all the hassle, but they hell, they treat me like I'm uh, Ed Bradley. They want world-class content. I'm like, dude, I'm from the streets. But thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. Because I, I got this on her blog that's under attack. I don't get it. I mean, I saw where something came across my feed. I didn't click on it. It was regular guy versus Andy Omar. I'm like, what's this all about, man? We 8,000 miles away. Man, we need to leave that stuff back in America. I mean, but some people make their content. That's, how they, that's the only content they got. I've been through it, man. I've been through the ringer, man. Some of these guys, they don't realize They've had it easy for real compared to me. I mean, people over here, they had me in front of immigration. They had me in front of NBI for human trafficking, exploiting Filipino women. Because remember, we don't get, uh, there's no due process over here. So all you have to do is accuse somebody and Filipino authorities, they're gonna bring you in. But most people don't get that far. But for me, I did and I'm like, why? Hey, what's up, Patrick? I'm doing great, brother. But yeah, we're under attack over here, man. Okay, be careful what you wish for. You see what happened at the University of Kentucky? They got rid of John Calipari. Now what? And it's going to be the same thing. You're going to keep on getting rid of these vloggers, man. There's not going to be anybody left to give you the true story. You know, we're literally standing on the shoulders of the guys who came before us. What's the gentleman down in Brazil? Charles something? Before I even thought about getting a channel, I used to watch him down in Brazil. You know, giving people hope. Say, hey, man, you got more options than the hood and all that. But what do we want to do? We want to jump on your back and pull you down. Expose you, they want to say. You ain't going to expose shit for me, man. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to expose. I'm telling you everything. My business to begin with to get in front of that. I'm from I'm from the old school. I'm very naive, man, when it comes to that. I had no idea. Hell, I should have named my channel Beautiful Lies or something like that and had a you know a nickname El Guapo or something like that. See, these guys are smart. I'm stupid. I put my real name out there and everything. Because I had no idea these clowns was out here like that. But y'all gonna run us away. 
Then you got to get on that plane and come all the way over here yourself. Yeah, Charles Tyler. You know, we're standing on these guys' shoulders, man. That's what my vlog is about today. Why men don't learn from the mistakes of other men when traveling overseas. And I got this from uh, my last vlog about uh, the age gap. And some guy says, well, men aren't going to listen to you. They want to make their own mistakes. Okay, that's fine. Make your own mistakes, but don't make the same mistakes I made. Well, you, when you do something over and over and over expecting different results, that's insanity. But we're going to get to that because this is important. This is one of the reasons we're online. You know, we're giving you the 411 so you don't have to trip and fall when you get over here. I didn't have that. In 2009, I just got on a plane and came to the Philippines. I could have gotten off in Boziland. Holo salute. Tawi Tawi. I had no idea what I was doing. What's up, Elat? But let's talk about that age gap. Just for a second, the video that I did. This is what I call bringing the matrix with you over here. You're not in America. You're not in England. You're not in France. Where everybody expects you to date a woman your same age. The circumstances aren't the same. Remember, there's a lot of dynamics that go into dating younger women over here and younger women uh, pursuing older men. A lot of it has to do with the economics. It doesn't matter what you think about it. They're going to do it anyway. And they've been doing it long before you were even born. But you're not in America anymore, man. We only represent 4% of the population. But yet, we want to control 100% of the narrative. Just because it uh, happens in America doesn't mean that it's going to happen everywhere else around the planet. We're a small, small percentage of the population. You know, whether you like it or not, age gap relationships are here to stay. It's no big deal. Stop making a big deal out of it. Okay. We're going to get in the way of our own pleasure and our own happiness, being so damn self-righteous. The guys who are angry with it, just because you got some old dried up elephant over there, and you see these guys over here, 50, 60 years old, with these 20, 25-year-old women, man, these are grown-ass women who can handle themselves. They don't need you to take up for them. I'm telling you, man, I'm boots on the ground over here. I've dealt with young women before. Merlin's the oldest woman I've ever dealt with. She's not old. I'm 20 years older than Merlin, but nobody makes a big deal out of that because Merlin's 41 years old. It's the woman's age that people have a problem with, but they don't come over here and see how tough it is over here. See, I'm not on vacation. I live over here. I see how tough it is, and they see us as a way out. Some of the women see us as a way out. And they, you know, attach themselves to your star, man. It's, it's that simple. There's nothing I can do to stop it. Nothing you can do to stop it. But, you know, the people who have a problem with it, you see those old women over in America who hit the wall. But then the, the older women over here have a problem with it. Because this, these young women are their competition. But it's no big deal. I'm telling you that. Okay. And it is one of those shut the fuck up and mind your own business situations. Okay. Whose business is it what two grown adults agree to? Okay. I've been in a situation. I never dated a woman over 25 until I dated Merlin. Well, actually, the first, very first woman I came here to meet, she was 41 because I didn't know any better. Imagine she gave me the 411. She said, hey, what are you doing dating me? Foreigners come over here, they date the young women. I'm like, really? I had no idea. Remember, I didn't know. There was no sunshine shoulders telling me what's going on over here. See, I brought the matrix with me because that's all I had with me. I've been over almost six years now. It's out of my bloodstream. I don't even look twice at it. Okay, one of my closest expat friends over here is named Jack Wolfanger. He's my age. Well, he's a year older than me. 
He's got a 23 year old wife, but it doesn't even, I mean, I don't even give it a second thought, man. They don't even look cringy or anything. It's just how it is over here. Hey, thanks for the super chat, Young Fresh Global Travel. He says, I agree with you 100%. I'm 45 and my Filipino girlfriend is 20. So long as someone is legal, why should I care what someone else does? I prefer under 30 only. And let me be honest with you. Okay. The most beautiful women over here are the young women, you know, somewhere, you know, 18 to 25, something like that. I mean, the real stunners where you're just going to be like in Google land when you see them, you know, you're going to be like, holy cow, you know, not, not that the other women aren't beautiful. They are. But I mean, the real stunners, the one that's going to, you know, just have you hypnotized. They're young like that. But they're grown and they can handle you. Trust me. They can handle anything that you bring into the table. If they couldn't, they wouldn't be on that dating site. They would not be on that dating site. But I've dated them young and I've dated them old. It's really no difference. Hey, Cos, thank you. And congratulations, man, to you and your girlfriend. They're getting ready to welcome a baby to the, to the world. But yeah, that age gap thing, man. Y'all need to let that go, man. That's that's over there in the matrix. Over here. Why bring that stuff over here, man? The woman does not care. If she doesn't care, why would you worry about what somebody else cares? And here's the last thing before I move on from this. Even when people see you and they may stare, by the time they pass you on the street, their minds have reverted back to what's important in their life. Putting something on the table, getting a job, money, taking care of business. They don't worry about you because they understand the dynamics that's going on over here. Okay. And I think that's the reason why a lot of the them armchair bros over there have a problem with it. Not only are y'all jealous, but you've never been here, man. This isn't, these aren't project women that we're dealing with. This is way below that. Pro, the people in the projects would be considered middle class over here the people in the project in america you know so i don't i don't knock them you know there ain't nothing you can do i mean these women that's why they got us wrapped around their fingers over here okay you don't have to feel sorry for them pharaoh says it's, it's whatever makes you happy my Filipino girlfriend is 12 years younger. She's 41. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the only problem people have, really, it's not the age gap, but they won't tell you that. It's these grizzled old men dating these extremely young women. That's the problem. But they try to throw all age gap relationships in the same basket. It's not true. No one gives me a morale in a second look, a second thought, because she's 41. OK. And even when when I first started coming over here, I was 45. I was dealing with a 22 year old woman. OK. She turned out to be 18. Nobody even cared. Because, you know, I was it wasn't I wasn't some grizzled old man, even though I was 45. Her mother and father was 100 percent OK with it. I met them several times. We were together for like six months till I found out she was 18. It was just too young for me. If she was 22, it would have been okay. But I just couldn't get it out of my mind. But there was no reason for me to think she was anything other than 22 years old. She carried herself like a grown-ass woman. Anything I brought to the table, she could handle it. Anything. Oh, just be gentle. It was my first time doing that. And uh, whatever it was. But it wasn't like I was taking advantage. Man, remember, this is mutual exploitation over here. If you really want to know, I mean, you know, there's no victims. OK, we freely sign up for this over here. So this is what I want you to understand. We're the only ones peeking around the corner, looking over your shoulder, all paranoid because you with this young tenderoni. Everybody else don't care. She certainly don't care. She's happy. Like, yeah, I can get out of them damn mountains, you know, and get on 
with my life. You know, I want a phone. I want a motorcycle. I want a nice person. You know, I want that hot shower and all that. What's wrong with that? And then you're saying, I'm tired of these old, this elephant pussy I've been getting for the last 10 or 15 years or whatever it is. You know, I'm tired of that. You sitting, and that's why all these guys are having heart attacks over there. You giving everything you got. And then she says, have you stuck it in yet? I'm done. Okay. Um, you know, but it's just the truth. Yeah, Alan, thank y'all. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. You know, I keep forgetting to do that. You know, y'all take these channels for granted. Y'all take us for granted. We're, we're like on the street reporters, really. We're giving you 411 so that you're going to have better results when you get over here. You don't have to buy that long ass, uh, you don't have to buy an expensive ticket. Okay. Okay, he says I'm 36 and my, my Filipino has a 19 year age gap between us. What do you mean? Is she 17 or is she 55? If she's 17, man, get off my channel with that foolishness. I'm not with it. Dula May says, I like what I like and she likes what she likes. We both are not breaking any laws, so what's the real problem you have with yourself? They need to look within. Sorry, the problem is not over here. It, it, that's exactly right. It's something that you've grown up with. You feel guilty because the preacher told you that, the deacon. But remember, that's deacon clap cheats over there. He's screwing everything in the church, but he's telling you, oh, you're doing something wrong. What are you doing with them young women? You're taking advantage of them. Well, she might be taking advantage of me, deacon. 53 Shades Talker says, a long ass flight. I said, I said, I had all three seats and laid flat. I see prices went down to 450 with ass of tickets. Yeah, but you got to realize when they do that, those are just the perfect case scenario. You got to be flying out of certain places on certain days, certain time of the year. But it used to be you could come over here on China Air for 450 for a round trip ticket. When I came over here in 2018, my ticket was less than $600 round trip. And that was in December, but I bought my ticket in October. So if you can buy your ticket in advance, two months or more, man, you're probably going to get a better uh, price. Max says, have the foods over there. What's well, like anywhere else, it depends on who's cooking it. I just went to in Dumaguete, I went to a place called Cafe Racer. Shout out to Kevin. Too much time on my hand, 65. That's his channel. He took me there. He took me in Maryland there, him and Jenna Lynn. It's uh, right by the boulevard. It's right up the boulevard, but at the end of the boulevard. And I had a perfectly cooked filet mignon with macaroni and cheese and coleslaw yesterday with an iced tea. 469 pesos. But most of the time, I eat at home. You know, Maryland's mother's a good cook. Maryland's a good cook. You know, there's only so much you can do with chicken, fish, beef, and pork. I keep it simple over here. But, yeah, uh, you can get good food over here. Depending on where you live, Dumaguete, Cebu, Manila, and all those big urban cities, you can get whatever you're getting over there most of the time. But every city you go to in the Philippines, they're going to be known for something. Like Bacala City is known for their chicken. So when you go there, you want to, you may want to order chicken. Hey, what time is the travels? Thanks for that super chat. He says, I'm almost 60 years old. I still get hate from my family dating a 33-year-old woman. My sister's always trying to set me up with the mother watermelon in her church. Yeah, the motherboard. And that's all I've got coming over there. I don't have a problem with American women or women in the West. The problem I have is my options. 
Okay, I'm 60, so they want me to date a 60 year old grandmother with that inner tube around her damn waist, you know, and all of that. Men, we don't age as fast as women. Okay, let them have their heyday when they're young, they're fine, and all that. But once they hit that wall, now it's like, what? You didn't want me in high school, and now you want me now? I'm going to pass. I'm sorry. I got a 40 year old woman here in the Philippines that stays in uh, pristine shape. I don't, I don't want you over there. And that's what they're mad about. When they put Maryland up against them, I can show you the woman I took to the prom. She's got an elephant pussy, Elad. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. Oh, come on. See, see. Here, here's what we're talking about. Let's give him his two minutes of fame and then get rid of him. I'm not talking about the church. I'm saying that this is the reason why men have that type of uh, attitude when they come over here. And, you know, as far as I'm going to tell you something about guys who talk about the vloggers, you know, put up a shut up, Damon. Show us what you're working with, because I'm like a professor in a university, okay? I teach the same course. I just got different students. That's all, okay? You have no idea how YouTube works, okay? We can talk about the same stuff over and over and over, ignorant fool. You know, this is people like this who have behind these profiles, okay? Get rid of him. I, I'm not even going to waste my time with you guys today. You're jealous. I made it out. You make it out, okay? Put your accomplishments up against mine. I'm overseas, owning stuff, running stuff over here. You still in the matrix. Remember, I'm like a free man talking to a prisoner. I don't even expect you to understand what I'm saying, brother. You're just another hater. Get in line. There's nothing about the church. I'm talking about deacon clap cheeks. My father was a preacher, and he was screwing every woman he could get his hands on in the church. I'm telling you what I'm talking about. Okay? I don't be on here squawking and yapping. Okay? <laughs> he, yeah, he just wants his yeah, five minutes of fame. That's all. Big dog says, the 60-year-old mama got some bedroom tricks a 33-year-old don't have. I doubt that. You know, because a lot of times, uh, you know, at 60 years old, the pussy done dried up. I'm sorry, big dog. It's done dried up. You got to get a whole year's supply of K1 jelly and all that stuff. I'm not trying to go through all that. Okay? They, they ain't got no tricks that I want. You can't even see it. You got to get rid of that big, you got to lift up that big old compartment. Okay? All that old jelly meat and all that old stuff that you're dealing with. She's smelling like that old cheap perfume and everything. I'm sorry. I might be talking about somebody's mother, but it's just the facts, you know. And they've got enough men over there, big dog, to handle those women. Everybody's not coming overseas. Remember, it's a individual choice. Some of those guys don't have a problem dealing with the mother boy, getting a you know, a nice home cooked meal every day and all that, but I'm not I'm not dealing with that. Once a month type of stuff. Okay. I want it every damn day. Okay. And if you're not young enough to give it to me every day, and if you're not uh cooperative enough to give it to me every day, then move to the side. You standing in the way of some woman is gonna do it. Because as a man gets older. We become more valuable. My bank rolls a whole lot more at 60 than it was at 30. Okay, so I can get a little choosy now. Okay. Cinema Rose every day said Damon's probably another vlog who's already there and just a jealous hate. Yeah, they, you know, I don't understand the attacks that the vloggers come under, man. You know, we're trying to help people is what I'm trying to do. 
Some guy, you know what they use against me. I hope Gu El Guapo is still out here. I don't know if you've ever heard this one, El Guapo. They say, oh, Calvin, he's only on YouTube for the money. Now, <laughs> tell me anybody that's on YouTube who's not on there for the money and the millions of channels who wish they could be monetized. Getting monetized is only a dream to them. Okay. When you get monetized on YouTube, it's a privilege. Okay. I don't take that lightly. I'm proud of that because I know how extremely hard it is. And then to continue to get monetized, you know, uh, W Secrets of Success sent me a, a, a short yesterday. It's funny uh, where the guy's putting Michael Jordan on trial for being the GOAT. You know, and he was just stating some facts about Michael Jordan. Like, you know, get off Michael Jordan's back. And it's the same with, you know, putting Sunshine Shoulders on trial. You know, I've been accused of being on Facebook. I mean, YouTube for the money. And then, you know, the prosecutor, you know, states the facts. Yeah, he's been monetized since January 2021. And then the the judge hits the gavel down and says, you know, you're guilty of charge, but keep getting the money, see? But this is just, you know, because they're saying, oh, I don't need YouTube for money. Well, I don't know if anybody's going to turn it down. Okay? Yeah, I, I, would, I would like to know who, who isn't on YouTube for money. Okay? The ones who say that, they can't get monetized. Okay? Those are the ones who say it. They think I'm supposed to be embarrassed. You, you damn right. I'm going to earn for the money because if I wasn't, I'd be on that hamster wheel over there. And that's what they're mad about. See, I'm living a dream, man. This is something I always dreamed about, to be in a tropical island somewhere, kick back with a sexy woman, and I got more money than bills. I mean, I'm not super rich, but I'm considered rich over here. That's good enough for me, okay? Yeah, watching somebody's pocket, they pocket watches, dick watches, you know. See, that's what, those are the dick police that are dealing with this age gap thing. You know, dick patrol. You know, watching somebody's damn dick. Okay? But worrying about where I'm sticking my dick, man. Really, I mean, honestly, guys. Y'all, this is Cam 61. For the past few years, I've been hitting the gym at least three times a week for strip training. I exercise at home and walk two miles daily. I've yet to see any women my age at my gym. And you won't see it. Okay, your equal is not 61. As a man anyway. We've got something called testosterone. And it keeps us young. You know. But they're not going to run me off YouTube. You know, I mean. Anybody, you know, I saw, you know. They only deal with you and mess with you when you get to a certain level anyway. So if you knew out there and nobody's bothering you, you're going to know when you arrived, when they start making videos about you. I, I don't know if anybody has more videos over in the Philippines made about them than me. And it's like, if you, you want to waste your time doing that, go ahead. But I'm taking people's channels down now. See, I know how to do it now. That's why you don't see as many, and they try to get slick now. But if you use my content in your video and you're trying to troll me, I'm going to bring your channel down. I've already done it. So keep it up if you want to. I'm not going nowhere. You're just going to make me better. But, yeah, we're under attack. The age gap, they're just, they're just dick watching. I'm sorry, man. The dick police, we talked about that before. I'm the only one on YouTube that did a video about it. I didn't get paid for it, so what? I took one for the team because I want them dick police to know we know you out there and we know who you are. You know, they trying to watch regular guys dick now. Those women he's dealing with, they're 18 and over. Get off that man's back watching his damn dick. 
Yeah, yeah. But they think it is, Johnny. Yeah, they think, you know, not only are they the dick police, they the YouTube police. Like they really care. I'm exposing him. You know, he's exploiting women and different human trafficking. Not realizing that the Philippine authorities are very capable of doing that themselves. But these guys, they volunteer to do it. I hope I never get that miserable. I think I'd blow my damn brains out if I got that miserable. Okay, <laughs> people are crazy, but yeah, let's, let's get to this topic about, you know, why men don't learn from the mistakes of other men when traveling overseas. Y'all know I did a video the other day about the only time I considered myself really being scammed over here. Okay, the woman got me for the airplane ticket and about 3,000 pesos, about 5,500. And I tell those stories because I'm trying to help the man who's coming behind me, the man and woman who's coming behind me. Of course, you get people in the comments, oh, uh, 5,500 pesos, that's not even $100. I'm like, stupid, it's the principle. I don't want anybody to take anything or steal anything from me. Okay, we're talking about a lesson. Okay, so he says he, he lost 300000 but he didn't go into any detail. Well, then you're lying. As far as I'm concerned, we, we learn nothing from that. And then another guy says, yeah, okay, I understand what you're saying, but we're not going to believe it till we see it and all that. And I'm like, okay, it's okay for you to make your own mistakes, but don't make the same mistakes that I made. That's why I'm over here. I mean, why would you do that? If I'm telling you don't do this, okay, like this. Here's one mistake that men make over here. They, they haven't learned their lesson. Buying one-way tickets are these onward tickets. Why do we keep doing that? When we see these guys get stuck over here, okay, with these one-way tickets and onward tickets. An onward ticket that you're not going to use is just a one-way ticket. It's a big mistake, and people keep doing it. Oh, I'm never... Uh, Going back, you say. You don't know. But that's a big mistake, guys. Stop doing that. Okay? Stop doing that. We're not talking about any particular people. The big vloggers, if you're a big vlogger in Southeast Asia, they're coming for you. Because that's how they make uh, content. And he's not the only one. And he's not the only one doing that. It's a lot of people doing that. You know, some guys are saying, hey, I don't need YouTube. You know, like the guy telling me dreams. He's got a popular channel, man. This guy's got a great channel. He's giving out some good information, telling guys to give back wherever they are and different things like that. You know, he's like, man, I don't understand it. It's something I don't understand either. I hope I never understand it. But it's it such as life over here. But ban those one-way tickets, man, is a no-no in those onward tickets. Okay, you don't even know if you're going to like it over here. Okay, no residual income. Just coming over here on the wing of prayer thinking that little 10 or 15 or 20,000 is going to last you. Why do you keep doing that? Why do we keep doing that when... You know, guys, like the guy I met from Canada, he's a digital nomad. Okay? He's a digital nomad. Unless you're a digital nomad, or you've got some residual income. See, people don't understand, I've got residual income outside of YouTube. I've got renewals from my insurance business. That's what brought me over here in 2018. But guys are bringing 30000 or whatever it is. That's not a lot of money, man, because you're bringing the matrix with you. The matrix habits, spending habits, $1,000 in your hand is no different in America than it is in the Philippines. Okay? And until you can make it a difference, until that $1,000 in America becomes 56,000 pesos in the Philippines, you better have a residual income over here. You better have some money coming in over and over and over every month 
so you can at least have a peace of mind. But that's a big mistake that we make. You know, the scams. The scams is another one. And giving our money away. Over and over and over. Some of the things that keep happening over here should not be happening. Why do you keep hearing about guys sending all that money over here, buying land and houses from over in America? They're not even over here. I was so embarrassed by a guy. He sent me a picture of the house and the lot that he bought for the girl. I guess he bought it. He certainly didn't pay for it because he showed me some old deed and wanted Marilyn to is this deed I cannot tell you if the deed is real or not online the mistake is you ban it from overseas don't do that haven't you learned already the mistakes that other men have made doing that I mean it's it's, it's comical really it's comical the scams that we continue to have run on us, they're really not scams for real. You know, the, the amounts of money, I can talk till I'm blue in the face telling you that a dollar in America is not a dollar in the Philippines. But this is the mistake we keep making over and over and over. Get that damn exchange calculator out of your head. Are you going to go broke? It's that simple. Okay. Over here, 10,000 pesos is 10,000 pesos. It's not $179 or whatever it calculates out to. They don't accept dollars over here. They accept pesos. 10,000 pesos is a monthly salary on a good job per month. Okay, you're sending that money over here like it's nothing. A guy is going to send a woman... He didn't send her 200000 I made a mistake. It was 400000 that he sent her. He sent her 20 million pesos is what it came out to be. Okay? That's what he sent. That's a lot of money, man. And to, I mean, what would make you do that? But we keep doing it over and over and over. It's like if you haven't learned anything, learn this. Stop sending money. Okay, that's what we need to do before you get over here. Send out the money to meet you at the airport to get to the, you know, from the province, you know, to the bus station, to the airport to meet you. That's it. That way, if she don't show up, that's all you're out of. We're financing dreams over here. Okay. And that's all it is until you get over here. It's just a dream. Hey, what's up, Mo? He said, hey, brother Cal, we need to be humble and, and shut the fuck up. Absolutely. Donna Keith said, Cal, you hardcore. No, I'm not. I'm just real. We're so used to getting this sugar-coated bullshit that when somebody talks to you in real life terms, it sounds crazy. I already told you that. That's why my blog sounds so crazy because everybody else is giving you this honeymoon stuff. I've been on the honeymoon. I fell off the cliff. I've been through that place where all hell breaks loose, but I made it to the other side, thankfully. And I'm trying to help you get to the other side. You can't stay up there on the honeymoon period, man. You're going to go broke. Okay. It's not perfect anywhere in the world. Certainly not perfect here, but if you want to keep, you want to stay up there. I'm telling you that you're going to go broke and you're going to go broke fast. Okay. Go on and fall off the cliff. Get a taste of reality, a dose of reality. Okay, and then go through whatever you go through and then get to the other side and be like, whoo, we made it. That's what my blog is today. We made it. But I'm just talking about out of that damn furnace over there that y'all cooking in over there. There's no way I could be over there right now. I'd be in jail. No way. I'd be in jail. Okay. I'd be in jail if I was in America. You see me on TV. I'm not taking nobody innocent with me. I'm just saying, well, I'm going to be in jail if I was over there. Because many one of them crazy clowns, Chads, and Karens come up on me, I'm blowing them away. 
Okay? That's just a fact. He said, the poor man's passport guy, thanks, brother, for sending me that link. They are Guapo uh, live. I think it was live yesterday, yeah. He said, best lesson ever, Cal, the peso economy, yeah. We, that's one we don't want to learn. We're lazy. We don't want to learn that lesson. Well, you're going to learn it, or you're going to go broke. Talking about, yeah, it's a thousand uh, dollars in America. It's not a thousand in the Philippines. It is in your hand because you got the same thinking. You got the same spending habits, the, consent, the same consumer attitude. But a thousand dollars over here, the minute you get off the plane, it becomes 56,000 pesos, which is a lot of money over here. Okay. I'm sorry. 53 Shade Darker says some of these girls know exactly what to do to get that money out of your hands and into theirs. Not all, but many. Listen to this man. Well, they know already. They know me. And because they think they know us, but they really don't because. They don't have any experience with us for real. But they'll convince you that they know you as a foreigner. You know what Filipinos think about us, right? And when, and when a Filipina says this to you, I'm going to give you the answer to say back to her. She said, yeah, all foreigners want is sex. That's how y'all come over here for, because you can't get a woman in your own country. This is what they, this is what they think in their mind. So then you say, well, what does the Filipino man want then? Because somebody's producing these children over here. You're not producing it by yourself. Okay. Somebody's pumping y'all up. What do they want? Why am I any different? Okay. What do you want? That's what you got to ask them. Put them on their heels. Okay. But yeah, they, they're always going to come with that, uh, that's all y'all want is sex. Well, I'm no different than any other man. What does the Filipino man want? He wants sex too. Okay? There's a video on YouTube. It was shocking to me because I didn't know. Guys, I know very little about the Philippines, really. I'm just giving y'all what I'm seeing, what I'm living, what I'm experiencing. Really just what's in front of me. There's so much about the Philippines I don't know. Okay, I'm not an expert on this place, but I was watching a YouTube video. It was um, Ferdinand Marcos Sr. It was in the 80s. Ronald Reagan was the president. Okay, I, I guess it was his first, I don't know if it was his first or second term, but anyway, he invited uh, the Marcoses to the White House, and Ferdinand Marcos got up to speak. And he said, and this is in the 80s, okay? This is about uh, 40 years ago. He says, on behalf of the First Lady and the 53 million Filipino citizens, I want to say thank you, you know, for inviting us to the White House, okay? I'm paraphrasing, but he said 53 million 40 years ago. Now, in 40 years, the population has doubled, okay? So... Somebody's doing something over here. Okay. Somebody's doing something over here. He said, I'll straight me on say. Yeah. If you read Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, he says all men want sex if if their faculties are still working. And if you got some guys over here for whatever reason, they health reasons or whatever. And like you said, maybe, maybe they and even if they're homosexual, they still want sex. But if your faculties are still working, if everything's still working down there, you're going to want sex. It's natural. It's nothing to be ashamed about. But they think they know you better than what they do. So when I tell y'all about the script that's over here waiting for you that every Filipina okay, uses, it's a script, guys. They don't write it down, but they Every, all, every last one of them that we deal with. I'm not painting every Filipino woman with a brush because I don't know every Filipino woman. I'm talking about the ones who deal with foreigners. When you get over here, there's a script. If you don't know the script that I told you, go in, in my library, you'll see it. 
But it goes up like this. You start chatting online. She gets the commitment. You start sending money. You come over here. She meets you at the airport. You move in immediately. It's like the girlfriend experience, right? She, it's like she's been knowing you her entire life. The unspoken agreement is activated. Sex, everything. She's washing your clothes, cooking your food, cleaning the house. You're paying for everything. That's the script. You, you, you do that for two weeks. You fall in love. You go back and you start sending money back here. Even more money than you were sending before. That's the script. And if your script didn't go that way, you're lying. You're lying. And you know you're lying. That's a script and they all do it. Okay, now all you have to do, if you don't want to play by the script, all you got to do is break that script up somewhere. Say, no, I don't want you to meet me at the hotel. Or we're not going to stay together the whole two weeks. I'm going to meet somebody else. See, all you got to do is something like that. Say, I'm going to meet somebody else because I want to make sure that I meet the right person. You're making all the sacrifices, dummy. She's, not, she's just going about her own her old life over here. She's going about her business over here. She's not making no sacrifices. She's just waiting for you to get over here. So you say, no, I'm going to meet somebody else. Okay, so that's how you break up that script. Okay, and then if she don't want to go along with it, okay, then you find somebody that will. At least you done broke the script. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Because the first relationship's not going to work anyway. Okay, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say that. And if it did, you know, just you're the exception. Okay, you don't want to come all the way 8,000 miles and put all your eggs in one basket. Why would you be that stupid? Don't do that. Break that script up. Okay, break it up. Then you're going to have something to weigh it up against because you don't know what constitutes a good woman over here and what doesn't. How did you know? How do you know? you never been here before. All women are not the same. Okay, yeah, they do have some type of, uh, they're thinking some things in common, but it's a whole different culture over here. Remember, nothing over here is ever going to make sense to you. It's not supposed to and it never will because you're in the Philippines. Now, D Mac, thanks for that super chat. He said, Brother Cal, all women around the world want the best possible man they can get. Now that they recognize their work and getting the best woman, folks are hating. Keep teaching, my brother. Real, real men support you. Thank you. Yeah, you, you're exactly right. And this is the line I'm talking about. This is how you know your word. See, they want you, they've got the memo. That you're desperate. Okay. And all you want is sex. But you got to let them know. Let them college educated. They are retired as a police chief over there. Not that they care. But you got to let them know. I got, I'm not just going to come over here and fall in love. And take care of you for the rest of your life. Just because you say so. I want to make sure. I'm getting the best woman. For me. And just meeting one woman online is not the best way to do it. You're never going to know because the first one's not going to work. So then all you're going to do is keep running back and forth. All you got to do is come over here. The, I only did two things right when I came over here. I flew into Cebu, number one, and I had two women that I was going to see. And I told the woman, I paid her to leave because she wasn't going anywhere. I said, no, I got somebody else I'm going to meet. I'm sorry. You know, because, you know, we, we wasn't really, we wasn't really, you know, it wasn't, the spark wasn't there. And they're looking for the spark, too. She was mad, but I, I didn't care. I gave her $140 in cash. I gave her seven $20 bills. A Cisco says, I don't want sex, Cal. I want long talks, long walks, and listening to the, uh, Tell us, Will. I guess you want little baby ducks too. What's that song? I love little baby ducks, old pickup trucks. I guess that's you. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gonna fold. That's what they want you to do. They they don't they don't want you to realize. That's why they mad at me. Filipinos do not like me, man. They don't like to come around me because I'm the one that told you you had the royal flush. They want you to think that they've got the royal flush and you got the paraduces. No, lady, you got the paraduces. To be honest with you, okay, you got the paraduces. I got a royal flush. And I'm going to use it. I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. I'm not trying to use anybody. But let's be real. Give them the facts. I'm coming 8,000 miles, lady. That ticket cost me 1,500. I've got to sit through an excruciating 20 hours of flight time just to touch ground over here. And I'm supposed to just run to you like a damn robot? Young Fresh Global Travel said, random question. How should we tip them? Sometimes when I'm in a tricycle, they charge me like 20 pesos, for example. I feel bad and then give them an extra 20 pesos since it's not even a dollar. Do you tip? Absolutely. Okay. Now, what I do with, with a tricycle, if I'm the only one, because it's the same way I do in uh, St. Carlos City. They're not going to pick up anybody else in that tricycle, young, fresh, uh, global travel. So I pay for everybody in the tricycle. So I give them 50 pesos for a 10 peso ride. Because they're not going to pick up anybody else. And when I go to a restaurant, usually what I'll do, like yesterday, I gave them a, I gave them a 60 peso tip on a, it was 524 pesos. I usually give them 10%, something like that. They're not expecting it. And most restaurants, they don't even uh, deserve it. You know, they just serve you your food and that's it. They forget all about you. They don't come back to fill your water up. Hey, how's your meal? You know what we're used to because it's just part of the culture. They're not really uh, expecting it. So I'll give them 10% that way. But yeah, I tip for everybody. Even when when the guy came and put in my, my water heater for my shower, it was free, but I gave him 500 pesos. But yeah, but don't feel obligated to, but you will know, just, you know, go with, let the spirit move you. Okay. But yeah, I, I certainly tip because you can't get it out of your head that life is tough over here. And, you know, I tried to suggest to guys, you know, don't let somebody trying to screw you out of 100 pesos ruin your time over here. Give it to them, man, and just go on about your business. It's not worth it. Just remember, you know, we'll never understand. Okay. We were man, so fortunate that the wheel of life stopped off and let us off wherever it stopped and let us off wherever it was in the West that it did. Canada, United States, France, UK, whatever it is. We had nothing to do with it. And that's how I stay humble. You know, I know I had nothing to do with it. And a lot of people over here and in other places, they're probably doing a whole lot better than what I would be doing under the circumstances. But I absolutely tip. Hey, D-Mac, he said, sorry about the typo, my brother. I wanted to say how men are finally and financially recognizing their work around the world. Keep teaching my brother. Yeah. And see, this is what I was talking about today as far as vloggers and what we try to do. You know, we're doing the best we can. We're not Ed Bradley, man. We're not these professional journalists and stuff. We're just boots on the ground, man. And we're saying, hey, look, man, I'm in the Philippines. This is an option for you. Okay. Some people in Thailand, some people in Brazil, Colombia, we're boots on the ground. We're giving you everything we got, you know, because we're standing on the shoulders of the men who came before us. All I'm doing now is just giving back. That's all. And you're exactly right. Once you get outside of that matrix, because that's a, it's an illusion over there. You're a whole lot more than what they tell you you are over there. 
over there, I'm just some black man, 60 year old black man. I need to sit down and shut up somewhere. I'm Paul Paul over there. Now realizing when I come out into the rest of the world, I'm some dynamic individual. The sought after, you know, women are chasing me. Real or unreal, man, it's fun. And I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to sit in some damn rocking chair over there and hand out gift cards at Walmart. I'm certainly not going to do that. Play bingo every Tuesday. When I'll be like, yeah, bingo, I struck it rich over here. You know, it's up to you. But I'm not going to do it. Ron Lawson said, hey, Cal, what's a good amount to carry with you at one time? Well, you know, it depends on where you go. If you go into the mall and you want to buy something, you know, I never carry over 10,000 pesos with me. Okay. Because 10,000 pesos is, is a lot of money over here. It, that's a lick for somebody to, to knock you over the top of your head and hurt you. But if you're going somewhere where you know if you're going to buy like a new phone, and you don't have a credit card, then you know you put the twenty five thousand. But I don't carry that kind of money in San Carlos City, man. I may carry five thousand, six thousand, and that's only when I'm going to the grocery store. I'm no, I'm I'm making a beeline to the grocery store, okay. But when you start carrying all that kind of money around like this, like what do you? Unless you're on a mission to buy a motorcycle or put a down payment on your apartment or something like that. I would carry about 5,000, no more than 10,000. Yeah, he said, facts, bro. Yeah, man, I'm not going to sit around and, and let them warehouse me like they're doing us over in America. You know. You know, even though the guy, you know, I don't have anything against the Campbell Channel. I don't know why he's so mad at me. But look at him. You don't come well where he would be if he was in America, but he's got a nice looking wife over here taking care of. I mean, people are mad at me, but I don't know why. They make up shit, man. But the, he's a perfect example. I wasn't talking about him when I said 18 to 80 black crippled are crazy. Maybe that's why he got mad at me. I was talking about that long before I even knew he even existed. Because that's true over here to a certain extent. Gerald Stipok said, don't facilitate the establishment and normalization of tip culture. Bad stuff for everyone else. That's not that's not you. Like when a celebrity comes into a strip club and starts screwing up what's normal. Well, the thing is, you just go with your spirit. That there is no right or wrong, Gerald Stipok, with that. You know. I'm not going to go in there and tip just because, oh, it's only $10. I'm not going to give 500 pesos. Now, have I done that before? Yeah, around Christmas. I gave 1000 at the Marwani, and they'll tell you. But that's because everybody's splitting that money. But no, the only reason, if you, if you listen to what I said, I pay the tricycle driver for everybody in the tricycle because he's not going to stop and pick up anybody else. Why should I penalize him for stopping and getting me? That's all I'm saying. You just make it clear to him then. When you get in there, you say, hey, look, if you want to pick up other people, go ahead. But when they pick me up, they're not stopping. Okay? And so I give them 50 pesos. Yeah, bingo, yeah, yeah. Who wants that? Brock's Big Adventure said, can I live off 26,000 pesos a month? I don't know. You, you got to ask yourself that. There's no way I could, with such limited information, could I give you an answer to that? I know people over here that live off a whole lot less, but I didn't come here to struggle. Uh, we, we don't deny ourselves any creature comforts over here, okay? I like to travel, you know, in Maryland, we're gonna go to 53 Shade Dark and we're gonna go to his wedding 
and we'll probably go somewhere before that. We we usually take about a week every month to go somewhere, and you're not going to be able to do that on twenty six thousand a month. But can you do it? You probably can if you want to live like that guy in Sa Santa Catalina. That's the name of the place. It's about two two and a half hours from here in the wilderness like that in a Kubo. Yeah, you probably can do it. But I just came from immigration. I'm paying 2,800 pesos every two months just to extend. So, hell. Steven said, we're buying a motorcycle there. I just get a scooter. Yeah, I would get a scooter. You know, because I'm a minimalist anyway. And I, I try to let guys think, look, don't buy a whole lot of stuff that you can't get rid of just in case you, you got some type of exit strategy. Okay, because the guys are buying cars over here. Good luck if you got to go back home trying to sell that thing and, and getting really anything. You're going to get pennies on a dollar for it. Or just give it to the woman and she's going to crash it. Okay. So, yeah, I would get a scooter. They got some nice scooters here. I bought Merlin an a, a NMAX. I mean, any foreigner, I don't care how big you are, you can grab that NMAX and they got some nice Hondas. We had a PCX. Then they got the, the X Max. But yeah, I would get a scooter. That way you're not out of too much money and you're going to be able to sell it. People buy scooters here because we sold our PCX to put as a down payment for our N Max. So yeah, it, it, I would get a scooter. He says, I realized the Philippines was for me. When my Philippine and I met for the first time, I was going to take her to this. See the hotel rooftop restaurant. You know what she wanted. Yeah, probably Jollibee or something like that. But remember, you're bringing a matrix with you. But here's what I tell guys on your first trip to the Philippines. There's only one first time to the Philippines. Create some memories, man. Bring as much money as you can afford. Stay as long as you possibly can. Because your star does not shine any brighter than the first time you're here. So if you want to do that, I would have done it anyway. And then the next day he took her to the calendaria or wherever she wants to eat. Okay. Because of, because the guy said, yeah, okay, that's my first time. I, he was asking me for some hotel suggestions. And I gave him some. I said, the Bayes Hotel, uh, what's the other one? Quest, you know, where they're, they're not – Low budget. That buys hotel for about seventy dollars, man. You get a damn good hotel. Yeah, among inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're not gonna pay. That's what they used to. Yeah, TJ. Now, see, TJ would know. You know, okay. He said, yeah, same. I'd say four to six thousand is good walking around money, and you should have change unless you go. Drinking, partying, or skirt chasing. Yeah, because a guy asked me yesterday, he said, what denomination bills? I said, well, it depends on where you're going. If you're going to the market, you need smaller bills because they're not going to have change uh, for the tricycle or the jeepney. If you're going to the mall or to the grocery store, it doesn't matter what you give. Them. They're going to change it. But I wouldn't carry any more than that. I mean, what? hell, a beer is 60 pesos or something like that. You can get a whole filled with tender wine for what, 200 pesos or something? Why would you need all that? What is a, what's a pack of cigarettes? You can get one mighty cigarette, I think, for six pesos. It just doesn't, you know, the stuff that you're going to buy, unless you're in the mall or somewhere like that, it's just not that expensive. Tricycles, what, 50 pesos? The taxi may be, what, 100 to, 100 to 200 pesos? I mean, then you go to dinner, unless you're going to go to TGI Friday or Abaca Bake Shop or somewhere like that. Hell, a thousand pesos, man, you you eating good. Hey, Rick Hart, thanks for that super chat. He said, planning your future with one LDR that you never communicated with is like buying a timeshare vacation. Yeah, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. I'm not trying to be angry. This is what Filipinos want 
to make you think that I'm, I'm being uh, bad for that. I'm giving you bad advice. I'm not because they're chatting with three or four guys, okay? Because remember, it takes a tremendous amount of time, effort, and money to get over here. She doesn't know if you're coming or not. She wants somebody who's coming. So to increase her odds, she's going to chat three or four people. Marilyn did it. And there's not a woman online, if she's worth her weight in rice, is going to chat with one man. That's their problem. And it's the same problem with the man. You just chatting that one woman, you just gonna keep pouring money, money, money out, right? And the, and the woman's over here just waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. And then all that time she's waiting, then some man shows up after meeting her for one week. And where you done already, you know, set it all up, he's gonna enjoy the fruits of all your labor. And all the money you sent, you can't get that back. But they're chatting three and four men. So why not you chat three or four men? See, that's another mistake I got on here. We only chat one woman online. That's a mistake. Don't do that. And when you come over here, don't do it. Okay, let her know. Yeah, because they're going to ask you, are you meeting anybody else? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. I'm going to stay with you. The first week to see if everything goes right and if it does maybe i won't go to the other lady but if it don't if we don't hit it off yeah i'm going i've already got an itinerary here's my ticket i'm going to barakai it's one person you're not going with me and you say oh i'm trying to be mean a moment submit says it's easily to exchange the coins when exchanging what do you mean um, if you get in the tricycle or different things like that, and depending on how much the purchase is, they'll give you change, but you don't want to walk around, man. It's like walking around with big metal balls in your hand. This change over here is, is heavy. It's not like a, I don't know what they're making this change out of over here. Okay. The 20 peso is the smallest bill. And then they got a 10 peso, 5 peso, 1 peso. Then they got increments of 1 peso, which they call that, um, I don't even have my thinking cap on today, a centavos. So 1 centavos, uh, it takes 100 centavos to make 1 peso. It, they break it down to the last compound moments with Mitch. But you don't want, it, yeah, it'd be easy. But you don't want to carry a lot of change with you. I mean, it's heavy. TJ says in Deval, for example, there's very few instances where you need more than one to two thousand at any given time. That's how it is in St. Carlos. If I go to Malwani, okay, I can buy, if me and Marilyn go to lunch, I can buy the Bulalo steak and iced tea with two rice. That's going to be about 550 pesos, 600 pesos, right? Okay. And, and that's the top-notch restaurant there. If I take her to Jollibee or somewhere like that, it's even going to be even less. I could buy a whole inner style chicken, roasted chicken, for 270 pesos. That'll feed the whole family. But they're going to make the rice at home. It's just like, why do I need all that money I'm carrying around? I, I, I don't see any use for it unless I'm going to make a major purchase. Kai said, I just spent a thousand pesos at the grocery store. See, that's all I'm saying. Now, when I go, I, I do one, I do two major grocery uh, trips a month. And I usually spend about 6,000 each time. Okay, and I'm talking about toothpaste, deodorant, whatever it is we need, uh, Listerine, soap, a laundry detergent, you know, on top of the food. But I'm going straight to the store. I'm not hanging out, shooting dice, playing cards, drinking beer at the, you know, imagine, you know, you can get a big, a, a liter of red horse, man, for 120 pesos. 
How many of them you think you can drink? You know, it's not saying you carry around 10,000 pesos. You, you front now. You pull out all that money, man, the wrong person might see it. Yeah, he said, these are budget figures for Joe. Yeah, if you're up there in Angeles City on Walker Street, even before you get to Walker Street, just all them bars and stuff over there, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to need more than, you know, you may have 10000 Because once you get drunk, you're not gonna, you're going to lose all concept of money anyway. You're just going to be giving your money away. He said, you do consulting? I tried getting your email. I do. I charge $30 an hour. It's just to keep honest people honest. You know, these live streams are really free consultations, for real. I know some guys charge 200 500 more than that. They don't have the information I have, but, you know, <coughs> most of the people who follow me, they don't have a lot of big money like that. But I charge 30 Put my email up there for me, Jacob Tanjay. You know, my time is worth something, but I don't want to be ridiculous about it, you know, because I'm over here. I'm living a dream, guys. I really am, man. I'm not playing. This is what I dreamed about when I was a little boy, man, living in a place like the Philippines. And I, we made it out, man. I made it out. What's up, Tia Chai? Said we me and fish with our ride. <laughs> he said, yeah, right. He said, no, whether you're a Joe or a John, <coughs> you know, we all, they turn us into Johns, really. A Joe is just, you know, your intention is just to be with one woman, one woman only, but hell, we spending. But yeah, a John goes out to the bars and he dicks bar girls and he's not looking for anybody. He's not looking for a commitment. And, you know, a lot of times, man, when, when they come over here, they really can't have a better time, really. They're going to spend a little bit more money. Oh, uh, well, it all depends. I, I don't know. The crazy money we're spending now, it used to be the John was spending more than now. I mean, how many bar girls would I have to buy to build a house and lot like I did? That's a lot of bar girls right there, by the way. I mean, that's a career in bar girls. That house and lot I bought, and then the guest house, then I fenced it in, and everything like that. <clears throat> so it used to be the Joe was getting away with murder. Now I think the, the tables in turn. I think um, the Giants are getting away with murder now. Because, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of these videos. Uh, about freelancers. You, you know, I'm not a John. I, 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 even when I was in the service, there was only time because if I was in the because I was in the Navy. Hell, you go out to sea for 73 days, you, you're going to be smashing something when you pull in. Uh, but hell, some of these women, man, they're basically giving it to you, but I don't know. It's just not me, man, because I know that five minutes before she's with me, she was with somebody else. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't. I can't deal with that. You know, just knowing because, you know, that pussy can be a funky thing, man. It can be the best thing that was ever created and then the worst. You know, if she pulls in underwear down and it's stinking, you know, you give me my money back. They didn't already, you know, you, I don't know if you can if you can get your money back. But you best believe she's not washing that thing good enough. I don't like that recycled pussy. That's what that is. And, you know, a lot of you guys like that. I, I don't like it. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, Ty T, thanks for that super chat. He said, I found your channel recently and enjoy your content, keeping it real. Hey, thank you, brother, for that super chat. See, this is what 
I was telling that stupid guy Damon, and I hope Tell of Main Dreams is listening because you know a lot of times you know people don't understand how YouTube works. I've been on YouTube almost four years, and they remember this guy said I just found your channel. There's new people finding us every day, so the information that you talk about, you could really talk about it over and over and over. It's like a professor at a university. He teaches the same course every semester, guys. He just got different students. It doesn't, he doesn't get bored with it. It makes him more qualified. The more he talks about that subject, the better he becomes about that subject. It's the same with us, man. Don't let them guys get you with that. Oh, you regurgitating the same topics and all that. That's for haters, man, when they say that. They have no idea that the teacher benefits just as much as the student, probably more. Okay, when I used to train agents, man, it's just, you know, what they call it, the, the information is repetitive. You never forget it. So when new guys come, every day somebody new. Okay, like YouTube at the end of the month, they'll give me my analytics. And put this in your pipe and smoke it, haters. 70% of my viewers last month for March were new viewers who had never been to my channel before. Okay, so look at all the stuff that they missed that I've talked about. So as a uh, favor to them, it's okay to, you can't talk about dating enough. You can't talk about sending money enough. You can't talk about uh, safety and all that enough. You got to keep that going in a cycle. And you're going to get better at it, man. But thank you, brother. I appreciate it. But you, you just made my point so clearly. But I know this already because YouTube tells me who's watching my channel. 70% were new viewers last month. Okay. Imagine that. It's crazy. But I'm like a damn professor, man. That's right, Roger. He says, uh, learning is repetition. It is. If I talk about any subject that I talk about, if I talk about why they want me to only talk about it once, where does it say on YouTube that I can, with, with the type of blogs that we do, that we can only talk about something one time? They're making up these rules, guys. These are haters. They're making up the rules as they go. Okay, you think I'm some type of computer, some type of robot? We're human beings. You know, you do want to talk about Airbnbs and where, you know, what's the best places, the best beaches. Okay, just like I was telling you about the tip top that I'm in today. Am I supposed to stop talking about the tip top end? What about the people who never heard of tip top end? They're coming to Dumaguete. They may not want to stay in the the best or one of those fancy places. The tip top is clean, got hot and cold, it's got air, you can hear the air, it's got good Wi Fi, but it's only 1250 pesos, and it's, you get a free breakfast. And it's right across the street from the big Robinson Mall. So I'm supposed to stop talking about that, just talk about it once and put it on the shelf. Y'all crazy, man. What's up, Thomas? Yeah, he said it's like being in the Air Force and going through the same training. But repetition is good. That's how we learn as human beings. Frank, there's no other way. Do you think you jumped out of your mother's womb and started walking? You didn't. Are driving a car? Are even talking? It's repetition, repetition, repetition. You have to do it more than once. But the haters, they they making up their own rules. They putting you on a level that they can't even adhere to. Okay. Yeah, he said, Calvin, you need to reiterate the rules. Thank you, lad. 
especially rule number one for the new folks. Yeah, rule number one is shut the fuck up and mind your own business when you're overseas. That's rule number one. That's my rule number one. If you follow that rule, all everything else is going to take care of itself. But if you over here telling me, and hey, man, Jack, you're 61. You shouldn't be married to a 23-year-old and all that, man. You're looking for trouble. See, are these troll, you trolling channels and making videos about people? You know, shut the fuck up and mind your business because you're going to walk up on somebody one day. Or somebody's going to walk up on you. You know, I really don't care what people do over here. I share my life with you, the good and the bad. You know, hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I make. Let's get back to some of these mistakes. We, we were just left off scams, right? And giving money. Okay, no matter how many times we talk about that, and no matter how many times we talk about the script, and how many times we talk about the peekaboo, and the Filipinos want that commitment online, and coming over here, seeing more than one woman, you're going to keep doing the same things over and over. Somebody's get ready to, excuse me, press that remitly button, that send button right now as we talking. They're getting ready to, to punch it. Are they already punched it? And then they're going to tell you they're not sending money. Okay. Live in. Live in. Okay. No matter how many times you say, hey, man, you know, you may want to, this mistake I made, I, I've never been by myself. The whole 15 years I've been coming over here. Certainly the last um, five and something years, I've never had a place by myself. Okay, so you say, well, Cal, you can't talk about not uh, uh, living by yourself. Yeah, but I can talk about not living by yourself. I can tell you that uh, you don't have the same freedom. It, which I mean, that's common sense. You would know that. But I'm telling you that you got that option now. I'm telling you, okay, what it's like living with somebody over here. Okay, the good and the bad. And then, okay, you say, well, I'm going to take that information and throw it out the window and move in with the woman the first day. Or you can take that information and say, you know what, I'm going to come over here for a little while. I'm going to have my place and let her. Because the guy I was with yesterday from Canada, I rode the bus with he lives in San Carlos City. His girlfriend lives in Bohol. See, that's how you do that. Now he's on his way to see her. Okay. Or that she could live in the same. She was. She's living someplace before you met her. But I'm telling you that. Okay, you gotta. You gotta be responsible to the person you're living with. I just can't pack my clothes and and head out to the Barakai. Okay. I mean, I've got a woman and a family that I'm with. I, I can't do that, having a living. But if you don't have a living, you don't have to check with somebody, okay? There's good and bad, but, you know, the, the living, we, we keep making that mistake. We keep coming over here, letting the girl meet us at the airport, and that's it. We never leave each other. We stay right there. She's the only woman you ever know. You don't know if she's the right woman for you or not. You can't go anywhere because she's going to be on you like white on rice. Okay, and then pretty soon it's going to cross. Who knows how long it takes, but you're going to cross into that threshold where now, you know, it's, it's like you're her common law husband. And if you leave now, it's going to be trouble. You're going to be hurting her feelings. You're going to be letting her down. All that pillow talk, she's going to throw it in your face. So just know that, guys, you know. But that's the mistake we make. We make it over and over and over. And we try to tell you guys, hey, man, you know, I'm used to having people around me. I, I don't have a problem with it. I grew up in a big family. Okay. And honestly, if I wanted to go somewhere, like I'm in Dumaguete by myself now. Merlin's not here with me. You know, uh, she'll let me go. She's not going to be happy about it. She's always going to be wondering, you know, who am I with? Checking with me every five minutes. You know, but you got to show some respect.
Thomas Marshall said, seems like some of these, those cats are zeros trying to be a one. I, I don't understand what you're saying. You're over my, you're over my head. Oh, 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 seven imagine says, thanks for schooling us in the game. That's all I'm doing is, is trying to give you what I got. Oh, 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 seven imagine. And I appreciate people like you who can appreciate what I'm trying to do. I don't know everything. But if you've never been here, and I've been here on and off for 15 years, over five years in a row, you tell me that I can't, you know, help you some kind of way? That's bullshit, man. Oh, I want to make my own mistakes. Yeah, but don't make the same mistakes I made. Okay, let's keep going. These rushed marriages, I call them microwave marriages. We keep doing it. We haven't learned from the man whose marriage is shy or who, the woman who uh, married him simply for the visa. We, we learn nothing from him. Can't you learn something from him? Because we're the exception. But now let me tell you, you think you're the exception. Are you the exception to the exception? Okay, because you coming all the way over the other side of the planet in a whole different country, a whole different culture, a whole different way of doing things, and you're going to marry a woman after two weeks, and you think, oh, because oh, we've been together a year or two and everything's going right, and then you fall off the cliff. Okay, then you're going to fall off that cliff, man, and it's a long fall, man. I've done it for you already. All hell's going to break loose, and you're going to think you're losing your man. I'm just telling you to hang in there and go on and make it to the other side. But I can stop you from all that. Don't get married right away. It doesn't work like that over here. If a man is truly into the Filipino culture over here, me and a Filipino and a man, I've seen it with my own eyes. The man courts the woman over here. He knocks on the door at night when he gets out of work. He brings the mother and family food and he asked the girl, you know, and she keeps telling him no until, until that right day comes when she answers him, yes, I know. They'll say uh, that it took a long time for me to answer him. Okay, meaning to, to give, you know, to say yes, basically. Nothing moves fast over here. So when they're trying to move you along real fast, that's a red flag. You're like, hold on, lady, you know good and well. It don't work like that over here. Nothing is moves fast over here. Trying to get married over here. It's not like in the United States. They're going to, man, you're going to jump through all kind of hoops. It's going to take you a long, long time. But that's what we'll do. Sperling Edwards, he's an Elo Elo living his life. He says, repetition, repetition is very helpful in learning. Chess is a great example. Thank you. It all is. So when you hear those guys saying, oh, yeah, they're just regurgitating the same topic, you know he's a, they're haters, that they're talking unnatural bullshit. That's what it is. Everything that you do is repetition, man. Do you think you knew how to satisfy a woman the first time? You, you did you had to do that over and over and over until you get it right. Now, that, that wasn't my biggest mistake, but it was a mistake because there's a lot of places that I want to see in the Philippines that I may never be able to see now. There's a lot of places in Southeast Asia I want to go that I may not be able to go now because I've got responsibilities. You see what I'm saying? I set that up for myself. I put the cart before the horse because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, hindsight is always 2020, Frank. You know, you can always look back and say, I should have did that differently. You know, it's not that I'm unhappy. I was telling Marilyn the other day, we got a great life. There's no reason for any of us, either one of us, to be uh sad or depressed or anything like that. It, it, you can't get it any better. The children are healthy. They're intelligent. We got our own house. There's no mortgage. Everything's paid off. Okay, we can go anywhere we want to go. Okay, 
food. You know, I'm talking about I'm in the Philippines now. I'm not I'm not in America. And to have that kind of life, man, people only dream about that stuff over here, the masses. You know, and sometimes you gotta carry that message to your woman because she'll forget. They'll start getting depressed, like, well, what are you depressed for? Like you living better than you ever lived in your whole entire life. You never even dreamed to live this good. And you bring them out of that depression and all that. You know, you snap them back to reality. But no, that, that wasn't uh, the biggest mistake I made. Doe Gitter says, I want to get some consulting time. I'm traveling to Asia this fall and would like to tap in with Brother Cal while, while in the Philippines. Yeah, just... Put my email up there, uh, Jacob Tanjay. I don't know if you did already. I didn't see it. Yeah, that peculiar mental twist that everybody has. It. They've been living so good for so long, they can't remember eating rice and salt. They can't remember. So sometimes you got to remind them, not trying to be evil or something like that, just to bring them out of their depression. What are you being sad about? You got the best life you could ever possibly have. You know, sometimes you gotta have some gratitude. I told Merlin, and if she's watching, she'll tell you, I'm not lying. I gave her the old, when you start feeling depressed like that, by taking things for granted, sit down and write on a piece of paper, your assets and your liabilities. Okay, what you got going for you right now versus what's going against you. It won't take you long before you get halfway down that piece of paper. You're going to find some gratitude, man. Because there's nothing worse than an ungrateful person. And you're going to start sending off that type of vibration and everything that you got to be gone and be taken from you. I'm on a certain vibrational level, man. I don't deal with people who are, whose vibration level is lower than man. I just ignore them. Go on somewhere, man. I ain't got time for that. You're not going to bring me down to that because I may not be able to get back up here where I am. Oh, there it is. Thanks, Jacob. There's my email, guys. If you want to get in touch with me. He said top not puff says it's, it's almost like a drug when you step off the plane you feel high. You do. But here's the thing man you know enjoy that as long as you can but don't stay up there too long. Because you'll go broke up there man you know at some point you know you resist the fact. See that's why these vacation bloggers. Their content is different than man. They stay on a, the honeymoon period because they're jumping around from different place to different place. There's a difference between a vacation blogger and an expat blogger. You're not going to get the same content. You know, where it's party, party all the time up here. Okay. Unless you're going to be a vacationer, unless you're just going to be somebody that's following them around, you're going to get a false impression of the place. But when I give you the real deal about a place, oh, I'm being negative. No, I'm not. I'm just giving you how it really is if you live here. It's a difference. Okay? Yeah, it's a high when you get off that plane. How long does it last? I don't know. Nobody really knows, but it, it at some point it comes to an end. And you're going to leave and go somewhere else and stay up there. I face reality. Go on and fall off the cliff. Falling off the cliff means being disappointed. They call that the disillusionment period. And disillusioned just means disappointed. You know, you look in the bathroom and you see the bloody cortex in the damn trash. And you say, I'll be damned. I didn't think they did that over here. Or something like that. Okay, or she burns your damn beans on the stove. And something's gonna happen. You're gonna fall off there, man. That cliff. 
And then it's all start. And then it's like everything's gonna come to you from every different direction. You're gonna go to the bank and be, and they're gonna give you hell. You go to the grocery store, your woman's giving you hell. The tricycle driver, it's hot as hell. You can't understand anybody. That's when all hell breaks loose, and you're gonna be like, man, I'm in the wrong place. No, you're in the right place. You stay there and work yourself and get to the other side, man. It's better than the honeymoon period. Because now I'm seeing things they really are. Now I can really make a real clear judgment. Is this the place for me? Absolutely it is. But everybody gets off that plane and high. I love the Philippines. Until you don't, until you get slapped in the face. Yeah, absolutely they tend to forget. It's real easy to forget. Especially when you got it so good, man, I'm talking about. I've got to remind my woman from time to time because I can see it. A man, I can see it and I ask, a man is somewhere else. I'm like, you need to quit thinking like that. You don't have nothing to be, you need to come right back down to earth. Whatever you're worrying about, you don't have to worry about because we become what we think about, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't hear anything else on this live stream, whether it's the good stuff you're thinking about or the bad stuff, we become what we think about. So be careful what you think about. Okay, you whatever you what are they talking about? You know, when they talk about since what they're talking about, they're talking universal law when they're talking about Job in the Bible. Everything he worried about happened to him. Damn it, that's real life. You start worrying about this stuff, it's gonna start showing up in your life. You start worrying about the good stuff. And raise your expectations, that's going to show up in your life too. He said, We need to look down instead of looking up sometimes. He says, Yes, what you are grateful for. Absolutely. If you're not grateful, man, you're going to lose it all. I don't want to send that ungratefulness out there in the ether, man. It's going to come back and say, Okay, you don't like this. We're not going to give you any more. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take everything from you that you got. You're going to lose it with that type of attitude. But when you're grateful, oh, man, it's going to keep coming, man. And faucet will never run dry, man. It's only going to stay. I mean, you know, imagine, you know, and sometimes I have to remind Merlin of that. You know. I said, imagine, just, just think where you were before you met me. Because I don't like to see her sad. Yeah, ATMs with no money. Yeah, them getting your order wrong. Yeah, see, that's the disillusionment. You know, then you're going to start questioning all the infrastructure. and It's all going to come at you. You're going to have a brownout. It's all going to happen, man, all this at one time. Okay, then that's when you say, oh, man, that's the all hell breaking loose period. You know you're in the right place. Because you know what comes next. Somebody's going to throw you that damn life raft. And you're going to make it to the other side. And you're going to be like, whoo, I made it. And you're going to see all that bullshit that you left behind over there. You're on this side over here. It's not that many people on this side over here. Okay. People are scared to come off that honeymoon period, man. They're afraid. So they stay over there. The people over here, man, they have a much better time in the Philippines. They find the, the good food, the good beaches, the good people, because they can see now with clear eyes, man. It's not clouded. The woman don't have a ledge wrapped around your damn neck. You can't see with that wrapped around your neck. How you going to see He said, you probably need to um, buy more clothes after you lose all that weight. You will. You're going to lose weight over here. The, the fountain of youth is real here. I, I did a video about that before. You know, in just the general way, the fountain of youth is 365 days of sunshine over here. That's the son of God, okay? 
that's the maintainer of life right there. Okay, the provider, okay, gives you everything you need, okay? That, the influence of a woman over here, man, don't underestimate the influence of a woman on your life. Most of us, that's our inspiration. We're inspired by some woman, but a lot of guys in the matrix, they're doing it for the man. They're trying to impress the man with the new cars, the new rims and all that. But the woman, okay, you're going to tweak your diet over here. Your comfort foods are here. All this is going to happen to you by default. The candy yams aren't here, the, you know, and all that old crazy stuff you eat over there. And then, of course, physical activity. You combine those four together, man, you're going to turn the clock back. That's what happens to men. Remember a long time ago, see, I used to say something. We only think we're retiring over here. You get rejuvenated when you come here. When I came here, man, my engine had stopped working. But me and my American wife, man, it was like, well, I guess I'm at that age now, which I was only 45 when I started coming over here. You know, I was like, she wasn't turning me on. I wasn't turning her on. I wasn't even interested in sex. Shit, I got over here, man. All that changed. I changed immediately. And it's been working ever since. It's been working every cent. Yeah, some escape, you know, Brazil. You have so much to be grateful for, man. If you ever start feeling like that, do that little simple exercise. Get you a piece of paper and talk about all the good things that are going on in your life versus the bad. Are you worried about your job? Well, hell, you was looking for a job when they gave you that one, when you found that one. Or the woman or whatever it is. What they tell you in recovery, no matter who loves you, leaves you, or dies, I'm not going to take a drink. Same way with you. No matter who loves you, leaves you, or dies, don't give up, man, hell. Because nature has a strange way of sifting people out, man. The pretenders from the people who really want something. Nature got out of my way. She said, I can't stop this old sunshine shoulder. No matter what obstacle I put in front of him, he just keeps on coming. So pretty soon nature steps aside and lets me through the door. All the blessings and everything. This is true facts. This is real life, guys. But what happens is they'll throw an obstacle up there and may divorce, maybe. Maybe you get sick. Maybe you lose your job. Somebody close to you dies or leaves out of your life, something. And then they can say, okay, now, well, hell, he didn't want it anyway. That's life if you live long enough. That's life, guys. But if you keep on, man, I promise you, man, you're going to break through eventually. Hey, Blizzard Abroad, he got a channel, man. He's been over to the Philippines. He said the sun is always shining above the clouds, brother. And that's a good thing. It's always shining, you know, because if it wasn't, even when you think it's not shining, it's shining somewhere, we'd be dead. That'd be the end of us all. That's a good way to look at it. He said, Corey Holman, Said it best, we don't need Viagra, we need variety, yeah. You get rejuvenated over here, I promise you, man. I got friends over here, man, at 90 years old, man, he's getting his groove on, imagine that. He was in America, you know what, it's crickets for him over there. I got a friend who's 80 years old. He'll be 81. He's got like a 50-year-old woman, and man, she's sexy as hell. Okay? Something happens to you over here. It's them four things that happen to you over here. If you let it happen to you, don't fight it. He said, bro, Cal, what made you travel to the Philippines? It was just on my bucket list, man. I've never been to the Philippines before. I was in the Navy. It's on an aircraft carrier. And every day somebody would come on there and they would talk about the Philippines. And remember, I was working with, I was a cook. So I was working with Filipinos 
they were the big, you know, they were the they ran the on the on the USS John F. Kennedy when I was there. They were the chief and the E6 is the first class in the mess hall, you know. And so when I, I never went, I'd be when I was in Memphis, I was stationed in Memphis. It was a brother, we, we were on guard duty one night, and he was telling me about the Philippines. It just wet my appetite. So then when I watched, uh, it's called Thoughts Become Things by Mike Dooley. I always give y'all this, y'all not looking at it. It's only a seven minute video. It'll change your life. He said to make a scrapbook. The house you want to live in, your car you want to drive, the places you want to go. So I wrote down Philippines. I didn't write Manila, Cebu, anything. I just wrote Philippines and Perth, Australia. And I left it at that. I didn't even have the money to come here. It was just a place I wanted to come. Hell, seven months later, I could have bought four or five more people. And then two months after that, hell, I was on Peng Lao Beach with a stunner. 25 years old. I was 45. Wearing her first bikini that I bought. Walked over that hill, saw that white sand with that coral blue water, and I was hooked. I've been hooked ever since. But really, you know, the Philippines found me, really. Hey, what's up, Moses and Miss? Thanks for that super chase. Adventure adds to the length of life. It does. There's a book, and it's just a small little book by Dorothea Brand. It says, wake up and live. And that's what she talks about. Most of us are stuck in a routine. Sometimes you got to break out of that routine. She makes it real simple. If you live in the country, go to the city. If you live in the city, go to the country. If you drive to work all the time, ride public transportation to work. Eat at a restaurant you've never eaten before. Shake up that damn routine. Uh, if you do jab, take a different direction. Take a different route home. You know, but the whole point of her book is act as if, as if it were impossible to fail. What would you do, Mitch, if you knew that everything that you tried, you were going to be successful? And this is what she's teaching you in that book. She says, what changed her life? It doesn't originate from her. This is something, this is from the French. It's, it's a French word, but that's what it translates into. Act as if it were impossible to fail. If you knew, no matter what you tried, that you were going to be successful, an iron man, whatever it was, the, the, the 15, the woman, the 15 woman that you see working at the mall, if you knew you hit on her, she was going to go out with you. See, this is where we got to get to our, our state of mind. But people don't believe it. He said, Calvin sells the Philippines so well, he should be the ambassador. I'm just selling you. I'm just really telling. I'm not really selling anything. I'm just telling you what I found over here. Okay, because the Philippines really did set me on fire, man. My fire had went out. I was 45 years old, man. I was ready to give up, man. You know, I was depressed, going through just a terrible divorce. All the success I had in the insurance business, it didn't even mean nothing to me. I was ungrateful, man. I reached every goal I'd set. But it was only when I came over here, the very first night, April 9th, I believe. I've been here. I don't know, 15 years now. The Philippines set me ablaze, man. A woman was standing there. I was telling the guy yesterday, get off the plane, I'll come out of the terminal. And there's a woman there with a sign, welcome to the Philippines, Calvin Roach. It blew me away. It hadn't happened before, it, ha it hasn't happened since. Okay, and it relit my fuse. It relit my desire to live, man. And I've been rolling ever since, man. So, yeah, I, I, I got to give the credit to the Philippines where it's due. Would it have happened somewhere else? I, I don't live. I don't do hypothetics, man. Remember, I don't live hypothetically. I'm telling you that when I got here, that's what happened to me. 
The people were so friendly. Every the weather, everything was perfect. I just really never left. Even when I was gone from here physically, I was in the Philippines mentally. So yeah, I'm not really uh, an ambassador. I'm just telling you what happened to my life. Philippines set me on fire, man. I promise you it did. He said, travel with Arthur E.J. Wade. He said, oh, wow, is that good? It is for me, E.J. You know, that's why I, I tell people that. You know, when they say, is it safe? It's safe for me. I'm just saying, I'm a little country boy from Lexington, Kentucky. I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. And when I came to the Philippines, it was like no other place I'd ever seen. And it had nothing to do with the women. You know, the woman had that sign, yeah. But it was long before I tasted the real fruit of the Philippines. But once I had a taste of that, man, there really was no turning back. Once you start dealing with these young tenderonies over here, man, and you, you, you're, in a, you're in a state of mind in your country where you think it's all over with, all you're dealing with now is Big Susie and Big Rosie and, and all that, you know, and then you come over here and you get the tenderoni, she's She's young. She's still firm. You know, there's still some uh, resistance there. You know, when you slide in, there's some resistance. It's not like, you know, like a damn well and a damn tic-tac. You know what they say. Yeah, he says a whole different world. Yeah. He said, my lady greeted me with roses and a cake. Yeah, that's what I mean, man. It's something totally different than what you're used to, and it's supposed to be different. He said, right, it may not be everybody's place, but everybody has a place out of ordinary. I guarantee you there's a place somewhere, it may not be the Philippines, that's going to light you on fire if your fires went out. If your fire hasn't went out, then hell, you set somebody on fire then. Okay, that's what it comes when I talk about helping other people. I'm on fire, man. And when I touch somebody else, they're going to get on fire. That's how it works. Yeah, it may not be everybody's place. I never said that. But there is a place for you. Okay? If you haven't given up. See, I got a positive attitude, man. And that's where it starts. He said, uh, Philippines and Thailand make me unhappy. Among other places. Brazil now... Cartagena, Colombia. Okay, I've been to those places. Rio, it makes people happy there. He said, me and America need happiness. We're just being taken for granted there, that's all. They see us every day. It's the same with the women over there. There's good women in America. We just have taken them for granted. We want to see something different. There's nothing wrong with that. Remember, we're only 4% of the population. So you're not even seeing 96% of the other people out here. All the other opportunities and all that. What we're looking for is somewhere out here, guys, more than likely. I'm talking about the average man. The Earth's 197 million square miles. Louisville, Kentucky's 334 square miles. Okay, and I, I, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was traveling all around Louisville. My life was probably a 10 square mile area, guys. That's how limited my life was. Is it any wonder I was miserable? Is it any wonder that my opportunities were limited? The women were limited. Everything was limited. But then I got out here, okay, and it all opened up. It started making sense to me, okay? Those people over there, they're standing in your way. and Get them out of the way so that the people who are looking for you because remember, that's all we want over in the Philippines. That's why I try to give to the guys. We want the women who want us. We're not chasing anybody over here. We're not harassing anybody. That's why I tell guys, get online and find a woman. They want you. You start running up in these women's faces over here, you're going to get in trouble. I don't want every Filipino woman. I want the Filipino women who want me. All I need is one. That's all I need. It's not all Filipinos. Do Filipinos like black men? My woman likes black men. That's all I'm worried about. I could care less if all the rest of the Filipinos like black people. 
the woman I've got, Marilyn Laura, she loves black men. She loves my black ass. Yeah, yeah. No, ten, a 10 mile radius. And when I was getting drunk, Mitch, a friend of mine said a six block radius is what we were traveling. When I was getting high and drinking, it just expanded a little bit when I stopped drinking, but hell, 10 miles is nothing. When you got a, a earth that's 197 million square miles, about 58 million of that is land. And I'm running around in a 10 mile radius. No wonder I was so messed up. And that's why a lot of you guys are messed up. You're over there drinking that Kool-Aid, man. Put that Kool-Aid down, man. They tell you what you're not. Then you come over here and over the places and the women start and not just the women, the people start telling you what you are. And then you start believing it. Remember, it's repetition. You start hearing that over and over and over. You ain't shit. You know, go sit down. You old. Your time is over. You know, it's too late for you. And you start believing it. If you come on my channel, I'm going to give you some hope. I'm going to tell you, man, your life just begun, man. This is the fourth quarter. We're going to live it up. We're not going to worry about what people think of, about us. Okay. We paid our dues. We raised our families. We worked our fingers to the damn bone over there. We paid taxes. We voted in every election. Now this fourth quarter for, for us. If I want to date a 22 year old woman or 26 or whatever it is, I'll be damned if I'm going to let you get in my way. He said, Mike Dawson, I said, I like that brother. You're a man with a lot of confidence. Hi, hi. At least we have something in common. Yeah. Because you've been over here. You've been set on fire too. Yeah, my woman loves me. That's all that matters. That's, that's why it doesn't make a lot of sense. How do black, the Filipinos love black men? My woman does. I don't know. I can't speak for all the rest of them. It's a stupid question anyway. You know, why don't they say the Filipinos like Korean men? Because I'm not a second class citizen. Okay, you're losing out with that type of attitude. Who are you to belittle me to make that type of video? First of all, that's what pisses me off. So what are you saying? Why wouldn't you like a black man? Okay. Or any good man for that matter. You're limiting your time, but it's always odd that you like black men. Oh, that offends me. Okay. That offends me because there's nothing second class about black men. Especially the ones that come over here. Anybody that makes it over here, I don't care if you're black, white, Chinese, whatever, you're doing something. You're not the typical person. You're not the typical man. But when they make those type of videos, man, they're so uh, narrow-minded. Like, you know, who are you, you know, to put me down here? Lady, because <laughs> I just saw one the other day. I, I don't know who was it. One of those bloggers, one of the women bloggers, I think she's here in, in Dumaguete, as a matter of fact. And she's on the street asking women, lady, that's insulting to me. And if I see you, I just tell you, man, that's insulting to me. Don't do that. You know, if you're not going to do it with everybody, do, you know. But she's asking a question like, oh, uh, like um, I'm beneath her. I'm beneath them. No, I'm sorry. You're talking to the wrong man. Everybody doesn't get upset about that, but I do. Yeah, bullshit. He said, you get to the Philippines, you figure out you really are him. Yeah. It's a lot of places that you can go. You're going to get a different story than that bullshit over there. Imagine, you know, when you, you know, you're giving them the, the best years of your life. Now, all of a sudden, they want you to sit down somewhere and shut up. You know, going to that damn old folks warehouse on the 16th floor in a little bitty tiny ass apartment. Man, I helped those people for 16 years. I know what I'm talking about. I know what we do to old people in the West. We throw them away. We, we ignore them, man. Instead of seeking that 
knowledge and wisdom from them. Hey, moments we missed. Thanks for the super chat. He said, looking forward to a trip of a lifetime over there. If that's your mindset, that's what's going to happen, Mitch, when you get over here. But yeah, you know it too, Mitch. You work in the same industry. Okay. But I work with seniors for 16 consecutive years. I was on the front line. I see what, and I said to myself my, on my very first appointment, I'm, this is not going to be my life at 60 and 65 and 70. I'll be damned. Okay, because they throw you in that warehouse over there. They forget about you, man. You got a damn activity director. You don't even have a family anymore. They give you an activity director. She makes a calendar for your whole month. Wednesday, we go into Walmart. Tuesday, we play uh, bingo. Okay, there's nothing on there about real life. You can go out on a date, uh, you know, like, hey, let's go to Smoky Mountains. There's nowhere like that. You're nothing but a piece of trash. And then you go somewhere else where they respect their elders. The older you get, the more respect they give you. Oh, man, you lose your mind. And then you still got to hear the echoes from that foolishness over there. Are you too old to be with that young woman over there? Are you too old to do this? I have children. Are you too old? That's what you saying. I'm not old at all. Bullshit. In the, in the, in the universe, man, I'm a baby. Phoenix Hydra says, I don't think they were calling you less than. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are, because they don't make any other videos. Or do, do, do you like white men? Do you like Korean? Do you, it's always, do you like black men? It's like, it is that. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, dude. It's not the first video. There's hundreds of videos in the Philippines on that subject. I had to make a video to refute that. Like, the question should be, do black men date Philippines? Because we can travel all over the planet. We got a bigger choice than they do. They have a very limited choice. Okay? It's, an, it's insulting. And they need to quit making those videos. But okay, I get it. You're on YouTube. You need views. That's going to get views. Okay? When you bring up those stupid, insulting videos like that. But don't ask me because I'm going to tell you it's insulting. I'm not less than you. To, like we uh, do you date play? Oh, that pisses me off, man. Okay, I'm sorry. May not piss anybody else. He says, I had an ex tell me she, she won't date another white guy. She's with a black man now, doing very well. Character should be all they matters. But hey, those videos are rage bait. That, that's all it is. But I'm saying they old to me. Now it should be something else. I mean, at least say, oh, well, why did you like white men or something? But uh, do you take black men? Like we're less than, like we're nothing. Lady, you, you, okay. You know, see, if I was in America, it'd be a whole different discussion. But I, I know where I am. So I respect the people. I respect the culture. Okay. But I expect that same type of respect. Okay, but they're gonna keep on, so they're gonna. I'm gonna let them have it. Okay. Hey, what's up, Joe? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be chasing anybody over here anyway. We're chasing women that are standing still. They're not going anywhere. They don't have a visa. They don't have a passport. A lot of them. They don't have any money. Okay, so, so I want the women who want me. I can't worry about what all Filipinos and all Filipinos think. I, I'll never be that broad with the people I deal with. I only see a small fraction of people over here. But I'm smart enough to know, okay, I want the people that want me. 
I don't care what I am. Of course, you should be insulted by that question. Like we're some type of animal or something. Like we're beneath them. Oh, they got to think about it. Hmm, let's see what I did a black man, you know. And knowing good and well, if, if you can't take it, don't dish it out. Let me say it. Let me put it like that. I'll leave it at that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's insulting. But they're going to make it because they're going to get clicks out of it. I'm not beneath anybody. And if you feel that way, well, get out of my way because there's women over here who don't think like that. Okay, I got three women that will burn that out. They learn a lot. Well, they all do. Whoever does it, it doesn't matter who's doing it. I had to make a video. Go on my YouTube channel. I made a good one. I slapped them. Because that's not the question you should be asking. You don't ask, do they like Korean men? Show me one video where they're out in the street. Hey, do you date Korean men? Or do you date Japanese or Chinese or anybody like that? It's always do you date black men. Why? Because they think, because we're seen as less than. Lady, from all life springs from the black people. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. You better, somebody needs to teach y'all uh, uh, some history, because history matters. You know. But yeah, thank y'all so much for your super chats, your super stickers, all your thumbs up, all your support. For Sunshine Shoulders. I really appreciate all my members. We're going to have our members only live stream in the morning. I'm going to talk about, you know, I've been watching these condominium videos on YouTube lately. You know, why are condominiums so expensive in the Philippines? And they're warning the financial people, not me. They're warning that a, that a correction is coming in the market. And it's going to bring the prices way down. So if you're in thinking about buying a condo now, I wouldn't buy it. I'd wait because they're they overcorrected. They're overpriced, man. Don't you realize condominiums in the Philippines cost more than condominiums in the United States? A whole lot more. And people are trying to figure out why. And people are buying it, you know, with the with the point of trying to turn them into businesses, you know, Airbnb and everything, but. What's happening in the Airbnb market is just a reflection of what's going to happen in the condo market. People are being priced out. The Airbnb, they're saying, hey, I can't get $100 a day. And maybe 60. It's coming way down. And that's what's going to happen because it's like, who can afford these things? You're talking 14, 17, 20 million for a condominium, man. So we're going to talk about that. If, you, if you're not a member, maybe you could consider that because I'm going to put, uh, I've got a, a members only video I'm putting out today and also my Patreon page. But take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. I've got to check out of here and go get my passport and head back to San Carlos City. I'll see y'all next time. Don't do anything stupid like come over here and get married after two days. One guy was over here for three days, a true story, went back three days, went back and filled out the visa papers for the woman. Her best friend saved him, said, you big dummy. She's already engaged to a Japanese man over here. 